evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to continue to read through the Animal Atlas and tonight we are going to look at, get oops, sorry, to the table of contents here, Animal Atlas. Tonight we're going to be reading about fish and I'm showing you this to warn you that there's some kind of creepy fish tonight one of which is the lamprey, which is my least favorite fish. I find it to be disgusting, to be honest. Uh, but there's also great white sharks, which is actually my favorite fish, but I know a lot of people are upset by sharks and uh, pictures of sharks or thinking about sharks, you know how it is. So and just a word of warning that there are some um, interesting fish in our list tonight. So let me find the page. We'll start off with some fish facts. Let's see, let's see, here we go. First we have this big, cool, up-close look at some fishy scales and read about the fish. So here we start off with some facts. Let me grab my pencil. Where did it go? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> it was right next to my hand. Okay. Fish facts. Um, fishy, fishy facts. Fish evolved more than 500 million years ago and were the first animals to evolve a backbone. They could be found in a variety of places from vast oceans to small freshwater lakes. Some fish live on bright coral reefs, while others lurk thousands of feet deeper in pitch black oceanic trenches. So what is a fish? They are vertebrates. The typical fish skeleton consists of a spinal column, skull, ribs, and fin supports. They are cold-blooded. Fish may swim in warm or cold water, but their bodies are the same temperature as the water they live in. They breathe with gills. Gills located on the side of a fish contain blood that absorbs oxygen from the water. They have scaly, scaly skin. Most fish are covered in protective, overlapping plates called scales. Some fish do not have scales. And they live in water. Some fish swim in salty oceans. Others need fresh water to survive. Some move between the two. Let's look at some fish types. How many estimated fish species are there? There are 35,660 and 34,250 of those are bony fish. Bony fish are the most common type of fish. Most of them are classified as ray finned fish, which have fins supported by bony struts or spines. And 1,280 fish species are cartilaginous fish. Cartilaginous fish include sharks, rays, and their relatives. Their skeletons are made of softer, pliable cartilage, not bone. If you're wondering what cartilage is, that's the kind of bones that's in your nose and ears. That's why it's wiggly. <laughs> and 130 30. The fish species are jawless fish. Jawless fish do not have hinged jaws. These curious primitive fish include the eel-like lamprey and the slimy hagfish. And here it says the gulf corvina is the loudest fish with a call of 202 decibels. It's louder than a plane taking off. Oh my goodness. Let's look at some extreme habitats. Some fish have evolved to survive in the most inhospitable conditions, from the frozen arctic to dried up riverbeds. Here we see the arctic cod. Arctic cod can survive in sub-zero temperatures using an antifreeze protein in their blood. This allows them to find food beneath the ice in polar regions without any competition. Here are the very strange mud skippers. 
Mudskippers are found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, but they actually prefer the land and even climb trees. They can keep breathing on land for up to two days at a time. And here's the even weirder lungfish. Lungfish live in rivers and lakes in Africa, Australia, and South America. During dry seasons, they burrow into mud before cocooning themselves in a mucus that traps life-saving moisture. The longest migration belongs to the Dorado catfish. Dorado catfish migrate 7,200 miles, or 11,600 kilometers inland, from the Andes to the Amazon and back. Let's look at how fish swim. Swimming like a fish. They can swim side to side, where their whole body moves like a snake. Long, thin fish, such as eels, propel themselves using a series of fast S-shaped movements through the water, moving their body and tail, or flank muscles move the body. Many fish, including salmon, swim with the help of their body and tail, using their powerful flank muscles to move forward. And using a strong tail, the tail flicks quickly. The fastest fish, from tuna to sharks, maintain a straight, streamlined body, while their flank muscles flick their tail from side to side. Let's look at some endemic species of fish. Some fish are native to a specific habitat and do not stray from there. They are endemic to that region. This is because these fish have evolved to adapt in that area only, and they cannot survive for long anywhere else. Here is the coelacanth. Coelacanths were thought to be extinct for 65 million years, but in 1938, scientists discovered them off the coast of southeastern Africa. Since then, an Indonesian coelacanth has also been found. And here's the elephant nose fish. Elephant nose fish are a curious looking freshwater species native to western and central Africa. They are found in slow moving rivers and muddy pools. The deepest fish. Let me slide this over a smidge so you can see the rest of it. At the bottom of the Pacific Ocean is the Mariana Trench, the deepest oceanic trench in the world. Incredibly, some fish survive in this cold, dark, and lonely place, including the Mariana snailfish, a pink, slimy species that looks like an oversized tadpole. So, the farthest a human has dove free diving without any special equipment was 702 feet or 214 meters, whereas the Mariana snailfish can reach depths of 23,000 feet or 7,010 meters. Go little guy. <laughs> the smallest fish is the Paedocypris progenetica, which you can see compared to an adult-sized fingernail. One, two, three. Paedocypris progenetica is the smallest known fish, with females measuring just 5 sixteenths of an inch, or 7.9 millimeters. And the biggest fish is the whale shark. Whale sharks grow 40 feet, or 12 meters long, about the same length as a bus. And a smart fish. Found in the Indian and Pacific Oceans, the reef-dwelling tuskfish can use a rock to smash open shellfish, making it the first wild fish observed using tools. Very smart fish. And here we can see the fastest fish. Named for their spectacular dorsal fin, sailfish could easily win a race against the fastest human swimmer. They live in the warm Atlantic and Indo-Pacific waters. So here's Michael Phelps. He swims at 4.7 miles per hour, or 7.6 kilometers per hour, whereas the sailfish can swim at 70 miles per hour, or 113 kilometers per hour. Go big guys. Okay, so 
and turn the page, we're going to see the lampreys. In my opinion, they're disgusting. Well, I hate them. They are interesting little creatures, but um, weird. <laughs> You'll find out why I hate them. The sea lamprey. The sea lamprey is a jawless fish. Instead of jaws, it has a sucker filled with teeth which it uses to feed on the blood of other fishes. Look, I'm telling you. It grows up as a larva in the rivers and lakes of North America and Europe, then lives its adult life in the salty North Atlantic Ocean before returning to freshwater habitats to breed and die. Let's read these little boxes about their little larvae here. Sea lamprey eggs hatch into young called larvae. The larvae burrow into gravel on the riverbed, leaving their heads exposed. They filter feed on tiny particles swept into their mouth by tiny microscopic hairs called cilia. This larval phase can last for up to three years. And then they feed on blood. I hate it. Adult lampreys clamp onto other fish with their sucker-like mouths to feed. They use their horny teeth and tongue to cut a hole in the prey's skin, swallowing its blood as food. The lamprey's saliva stops the blood clotting, so it keeps flowing, often until the victim dies. They are horrible. <laughs> I hate lampreys. Northern waters. Sea lampreys can be found all across the North Atlantic, from the frigid waters of Greenland to the balmy latitudes of Spain and Florida, USA. While most adults live in the ocean, some make the Great Lakes of North America their home all year round. Let's look at their gross anatomy here. The toothy sucker, I hate it. <laughs> it's gross. The round, jealous mouth is filled with rings of sharp teeth made from keratin, the same substance hair and horns are made from. Even the central tongue is rough for rasping. Horrible. And the tail fin. A tail fin and two dorsal fins running along the back help stabilize the body when swimming. Unlike most jawed fishes, lampreys have a skeleton made of cartilage, not bone, and no paired fins. Now let's look at the map and check out the lampreys' habitat. You can see over here they're laying eggs. In summer, adult lampreys leave the ocean and swim upriver to breed. The female lays her eggs in nests made from sand or pebbles on the lake floor or riverbed. Feeding at sea. <laughs> Most mature adult sea lampreys feed at sea, where they consume the blood of other fishes such as cod and herring, or even marine mammals such as dolphins long-distance swimmers. Sea lampreys can travel long distances into the open ocean in search of food, and may descend to depths of two and a half miles or four kilometers. Over here you can see the freshwater larvae. The larvae of sea lampreys spend their time in freshwater rivers and lakes. When they reach maturity, they swim downriver and out toward the open ocean. We can see Mediterranean lamprey. Lampreys in the Mediterranean Sea spawn in the rivers of southern Europe. And some little facts up here. One spawning female sea lamprey may lay up to 300,000 eggs. My goodness. Oh, I hate this. The length of a sea lamprey can be up to 4 feet or 1.2 meters. You know, I always think of lampreys as being like literally this size, like not any bigger than this book, but uh, they can be four feet big and I hate that. So let's move on to my favorite fish, the great white shark, which I know some people are bothered by sharks. And I apologize, but we're going to learn some more about these big guys. Armed with razor sharp teeth and a sleek body shaped like a torpedo, the great white shark is a fast, formidable predator. This wanderer roams throughout the world's oceans, but returns to the coast to hunt marine mammals such as seals, dolphins, and even small whales. Check out the boxes here. It says tracking sharks. 
Little is known about the exact movements of great whites, but they can be followed by fitting them with tracking devices. These transmit signals to satellites, which send information back to Earth about the animal's location. Such studies show they travel thousands of miles across the oceans. And ruthless killer. This is my biggest dream to see. I want more than anything to go to South Africa and see the great white jumping sharks. Oh my gosh. This is my biggest dream. <laughs> Once a great white shark sights a target near the water's surface, it moves in quickly for the kill. It attacks its prey, such as the sea lion, with a single ferocious bite, and in the process can breach the surface in spectacular fashion. It then lets the victim bleed to death before starting to feed. It's another misconception about sharks is that they don't eat you, they bite you. And um, a lot of people survive shark attacks because they, they just chomp you and then they swim around and kind of like wait for you to bleed out, so usually people swim to the the beach to escape so you really don't have to be worried about being eaten alive by sharks they don't do that they just bite you but anyway not that that's very reassuring for some people i'm sure long distance wanderer the great white shark is the world's widest ranging fish and can be found in most oceans but is found most often in the ranges shown on this map unusually for a fish it maintains a high body temperature helping it survive in colder waters and chase down, sorry, chase down warm-blooded mammals. Let's see, does it have any, like, anatomy notes about it? I don't see any. I just kind of see the map. Looks like there's a little one over here where it talks about its two tones. The great white's colors, gray above and white below, help conceal it from other animals. Seen from below, it blends in with the sunlit surface. From above, it matches the dark waters below. Let's look at coastal Africa, where I'm desperate to go to see the great whites. Along the shorelines of Africa, great white sharks hunt dolphins and seals, chasing annual migrations of sardine shoals. Up here in the Mediterranean. Look how many great white sharks can be in the Mediterranean. Like the whole of it, pretty much. Let's bring this a little closer. Adult great whites are often found here, and some scientists think that its waters are used as a nursery for young sharks, called pups. Up here in the East China Sea, again, pretty much taking up this whole sea here. All around the world, great whites take advantage of local bounties of prey, such as large numbers of squid, the seas around Japan, which we kind of learned about in the, the last chapter, although it was octopus that live in this area. I'm sure the great whites like to chirp on those too. Up here in the North Pacific, look at this rain. Underwater mountain chains in this region may provide great whites a habitat rich with prey, extending their range further west from the U.S. And yeah, there are great whites where I live, but they don't jump like they do off the coast of Africa. That's just unique to that location. The Southwest Pacific. The seas around Australia, New Zealand, and neighboring islands provide good hunting opportunities for great whites look at this range off of South America. My goodness. The Southeast Pacific. In this wide range, great white sharks can follow long highways that take them far into the open waters. And then over here on the South Atlantic coast, many great whites live permanently in this region where their warm-bloodedness helps them hunt in colder waters. And up here, in the Caribbean islands. Great whites typically stick to cooler waters, but sometimes they seek prey in tropical seas, such as in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. Very interesting, guys. And it says down here that a great white shark can have up to 300 teeth. Not all at once, though. <laughs> like, they have rows and rows of teeth. Check out this cool picture. Let's get the 
little fishy swimming around the sharks, trying to stay away while they're herding them closer together so they can eat. Let's read about it. In the sunlit waters of the Maldives, in the Indian Ocean, black tip reef sharks are rounding up their prey. Forcing the fish into even denser shoals, they nudge them into shallow water close to the shore before moving in to take a bite. These agile hunters are found in all shallow tropical area, tropical seas, particularly around coral reefs and lagoons. That's really cool, I think. All right, our next fish are just kind of interesting fish, but not as treacherous. We're gonna look at the steep head paired fish. Let's read about them. Around one-fifth of the world's fish live in tropical coral reefs. Many of these beautiful species, including the steephead paired fish, are dependent upon coral for their survival, finding shelter in their nooks and crannies. This paired fish, however, is also known for its unique ability to eat the tough coral using its strong parrot-like beak. Interesting. Let's look at the boxes first slimy blanket, it says. <laughs> While it sleeps, a steephead parrotfish produces slime from its skin to build up a cocoon around it. This shield takes around an hour to make and protects the fish from predators and also serves as a barrier to infectious parasites. Diversity hot spot. Looks like it's eating the coral here. The stunning coral reefs between the Philippines and Papua New Guinea have the highest diversity of marine animals in the world. Known as the Coral Triangle, this region covers two and a fourth million square miles or six million square kilometers and is also home to 75% of all coral species. There's the big fact down here in Australia. It says Indo-Pacific beauty. The steephead parrotfish is scattered throughout parts of the Indian Ocean to the Pacific Islands of Polynesia. This species' showy colors help them recognize their own kind in crowded reef-dwelling communities. It also uses its beak to break the rocky coral, digesting its softer flesh and pooping the rocky parts as white sand. Um, so, if we go to the white sand beach, it's fish poop. My goodness. Let's start over here in the Philippines. The warm, shallow waters around the Philippines represent the northernmost reach of the Coral Triangle, a region known for its diverse coral reefs and fish species. We're here in Papua New Guinea. Islands off the coast of this country have some of the richest reefs anywhere on earth up here in Northwest Australia. Coral reefs on the narrow continental shelf around this region extend this range, the range of Indo-Pacific fish, such as the steephead paired fish into the fringes of the Indian Ocean. And, oh, we didn't look at anatomy. I guess we'll do that after the map. <laughs> the White Sand Islands. Many tiny islands in the western Pacific are surrounded by white beaches made of sand, produced by the poop of thousands of coral-eating parrotfish. Interesting. <laughs> That's funny. My goodness. Island reefs you can see all around here. A scattering of volcanic islands circled by coral reefs provide habitats for reef fish, such as the steephead parrotfish to live further east in the Pacific Ocean. And here's their eastern limit. The steephead parrotfish, like many Indo-Pacific reef fishes, has the easternmost limit of its range in Tahiti and some islands of Polynesia. Beyond this point, the island reefs are too sparsely scattered for the parrotfish to reach. All right, let's look at its little anatomy. It's got a big head hump here. Only males of the steephead parrotfish develop a head hump, but all youngsters have the potential to do so. This is because younger females can change their sex and turn into males. And here we can see the breeding colors. Like other parrotfish, adult steephead parrotfish have a very different pattern compared with juveniles. 
Younger fish are dark brown with horizontal yellow stripes. They change color when they get mature enough to breed. I kind of want to see a picture of what that looks like because it's so different from these colors, huh? And the little fact at the end here says parrotfish have a set of teeth in their throat to grind down rocky coral. That's a little bizarre, but you know, that's just how they do. They go chomp chomp with their little beaks. <laughs> All right, and the last fish we're going to look at, speaking of chomp chomp fish, is the red bellied piranha. The rivers running through the Amazon basin in northern South America are home to the biggest diversity of freshwater fish in the world, including 38 species of piranha. Among them is the red-bellied piranha, a fish with a fearsome reputation. Let's see, we just have these two facts, and then we'll read a bunch of other facts over there after. Shoaling. Piranhas are often feared as bloodthirsty fish that attack big prey in frenzied shoals. But studies have shown that shoaling, as with other fish species, is more a way of protecting themselves from predators. Plenty of Amazon animals, such as giant otters, eat piranhas as prey. I feel like piranhas are one of those misconceptions we have as children that if you like stick your foot in the water, it'll come out as just like bone because they chomped all your skin off, right? But apparently that's not, so we don't have to worry about that. But let's read about these carnivorous fish. Found in rivers, streams, lakes, and flooded forests, the red-bellied piranha is known for its vicious appetite. In reality, it usually hunts fish and other small aquatic animals and avoids anything bigger. Only in the dry season, when pools run low and hungry piranhas are forced together, may piranhas attack bigger land animals that stumble into the waters. Isn't that interesting? Alright, let's read about their red bellies. This species is recognizable for its red belly and silvery body. And of course, their sharp teeth. The teeth are arranged in a single row in the upper and lower jaws and have sharp blade-like edges for puncturing and cutting through the flesh of animal prey. Alright, let's look at the map up here of the Amazon Basin, where they live. It says steady waters up here near the source of the Amazon. Red-bellied piranhas prefer the lower section of rivers, which are wider, deeper, and move more slowly. They are less likely to be found in the narrower and faster flowing sections near the river's source. White waters up here. Most red-bellied piranhas live in the cloudier, sediment-heavy white waters, closer to the Amazon's mouth, where the river drains into the Atlantic. Over here is the Tucatins, Tucatans River, I'm not sure. Anyway, Tucatins, I suppose. Many of the rivers that are home to the red-bellied piranha empty into the Amazon, but the Tucatins River empties directly into the Atlantic so populations of the piranhas are cut off from those of the Amazon. And flowing south, it says, in the east river, the Paraguay, and of course the Parana River. In the southernmost part of their range, red-bellied piranhas live in the Parana and Paraguay rivers, which flow through South America's open grasslands and drain into the Atlantic Ocean. Let's read these little piranha facts over here. It says, red-bellied piranhas bark to warn off other fish. <laughs> I'm sure they don't go woof woof, but I wonder what they sound like. And it says that some piranhas have a bite force equal to 30 times their own body weight. My goodness. So let's look at some piranha relatives before we go. The first one is the Paku. You can see it lives here in the Amazon Basin. A giant relative of the piranhas, the Paku has strong jaws for cracking seeds and nuts that fall into the waters when the Amazon is flooded during the rainy season. Here's the Neon Tetra up in this part of the Amazon, which I see a lot of fish, or these fish in like the pet store. 
tetras are tiny relatives of the piranhas that eat small invertebrates. Many, such as the neon tetra, are brightly colored, making them popular in aquariums. Interesting. Also appear in the Amazon. The freshwater hatchet fish. Look at this guy. Small piranha relatives called hatchet fishes swim near the surface and prey on insects. Their muscular bodies help them jump from the water to escape danger. The African tiger fish you can see in like the Congo basin up here. Close cousins of the piranhas live across the Atlantic and African rivers. Some, such as the African tiger fish, are also sharp toothed meat eaters. Look at those, my goodness. And the Congo tetra, also that Congo region. The brightly colored Congo tetra lives in Africa. These ancestors of piranha relatives first evolved when South America and Africa were joined. They're pretty cute. <laughs> Big ol' eyes. Anyway, that's it for tonight for the fishies. Next, when we read this book, we're going to look at some slimy, fleshy amphibians. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. I hope my cat that just woke up isn't being too loud while he eats his wet food. Or his dry food now, anyway. Anyway. Thank you again. Have a very